Hey guys, this is Alicia Robertson and this is day three of my favorite homeschool resources. And today I am talking about math. And I thought about this subject because a good friend of mine and I were talking and she asked me what we were doing for math this year. And you'll notice that as you dive deeper into this homeschooling world, she's been homeschooling for 17 years and she asked me and I in kind asked her because um, we're always reevaluating and, and thinking and looking for new resources. So anywho, I've tried a lot of different math resources over the years, uh, the old standbys like Sex and Math and Math You See, but uh, I keep coming back to Horizons Math by Alpha Omega Publications. It is my very favorite uh, math curriculum and we use this as our spine. And a spine is what you call uh, the curriculum that you use as the base or the backbone of your learning. And while I supplement, as I mentioned, with five or six different things, uh, Horizons is our spine. We started using it when my girls who are now nine, um, oh, 11 and 10, were five and six. And uh, we used a placement test from the website. Alpha Omega Publications has uh, a website where you can go on and print out, I think it's a one or two page test and have the kid uh, complete it and figure out which book you should have. That's a side note. Um, we don't regard uh, grade levels. We Our kids work where they're at, regardless of uh, what their age would designate for grade levels. Um, and this is helpful for a couple of reasons. One, we don't waste time with information that's not challenging to them. And two, we can also go back and fill in gaps and deal with anything that uh, they may not have, regardless of what age grade they were supposed to be on. And then three, and this is a big one, um, I have four kids within four years of each other. And uh, by God's grace, I've been able to group them a lot. So my girls are on the same level. They're both currently in the book five. Uh, level five book two and my uh, they are like I mentioned 10 and 11 and my boys who are seven and eight are on horizons math book three and um, that way I'm dealing with just two uh, subject matters and as you'll see as I go into this book it's really a lot of overlap a lot of times I'll just teach to the oldest and everybody else will catch it or um, at least get a good introduction so they'll be familiar when we come back to it. So that's that's a big tip when homeschooling multiples. Group everything that you possibly can. It's super easy with some of the liberal arts uh, subjects like history, to just do history with everybody. And my cat is on my keyboard. To do history with everybody. And But eh, math can also be um, grouped together. So, uh, yeah, so we started with the test um, to see what grade level they should be on uh, or what book rather they should get. And um, I like Horizons Math because it is spiral. There's spiral versus mastery. Spiral uh, is where you are constantly reviewing. Every lesson has two or three different um, subject matters. For example, here is a page from book three and he started learning time uh, two or three years ago uh, it's definitely in book one but they're still reviewing time they're still reviewing place value greater or less than this is review and in, that's in addition to the new concepts when a new concept is introduced this is one example of from book five They'll have a paragraph where you read. I have to honestly encourage my kids to, to read it. And that's one of the things that I, I do because I don't typically um, use the teacher's manual. I can't, I've made, I tried it maybe three or four times to actually go through the lesson scripts. They do have lesson scripts and uh, instructions on the teacher's manual, but we typically don't use them. I'm not saying that's recommended, but it is what it is. Um, and it's working fine for us, maybe because I have some other, uh, in addition to my own teaching, I have some other supplements that I'll mention again in later days that help uh, 
to introduce new concepts that they may not catch from reading it. But um, whenever they first ask me a question, well, what about this? I say, well, have you read this? And most of the time I'll go back and uh, read it with them or, or see that they've read it because I want my kids to be independent learners and be able to learn how to learn and not use me as a crutch. Um, anywho, so um, yeah, how we implement it. Right now, the like I said, my seven-year-old is negotiating with me. He said he doesn't want to do the second book. And I said, you know what? That's all right if you can pass the placement test for book four. So he is opted when he finishes this book and he will finish it. I, I insist on um, him finishing it because these workbooks are a little pricey. <laughs> Um, he's going to take the placement test to see if he can not do book two. And because it is spiral, I'm okay with that. We've skipped uh, one or the other in a lot of uh, first, second, and third grade and fourth grade for my girls. And they've, um, they're have they still getting a lot of concepts because that just tells me they didn't need to review it quite um, so frequently in order to get it or so much in order to get it. So we've moved on. And again, uh, we can always go back if there if we see gaps or see holes or if there's concepts sometimes things just don't click and you can try as you might but they won't click but you know you keep you keep pushing you keep moving forward and not getting stuck on it come back and then it's easy peasy ham and cheesy so um, another example uh, one of the things that I really liked this is again this is third grade but they um, just have a lot of review. They have a lot of, um, this is expanded in standard form. Um, and it's colorful. Again, it's a Christian publication. So they incorporate uh, things like the secret code they figured out was grace. So you'll see a Bible verse or two on um, throughout the book. I, I like that. But even if you, for some reason, want a secular curriculum, I'd still recommend this because it is um, really solid and rigorous. And um, like I said, I really enjoy it. So I picked these up. I'm fortunate enough to live in the area of the homeschool store. There's a homeschool store off uh, 1960 and 249 just in that vicinity. I'll put a link in the uh, comments to their address. I get nothing for recommending them, but I really love the store. It's really nice. It, pro tip number one, go in, beeline to the left hand side of the store because it's a huge section of used books and um, I always check there first for what I need but you typically can't find these used because they are workbooks and I just bite the bullet they're um, about 22 to 24 dollars a piece um, and again you need two per grade level if you're using both books uh, but I pick them up at the homeschool store if you're not by a real uh, a local realtor um, retailer, not realtor, my husband's a realtor, um, retailer, um, then I ordered uh, from christianbook.com often and they'll have that on there for about, again, $22.95. Um, the teacher's manual, again, we I didn't pick one up until third grade and we use it essentially as an answer key. Um, and other, other than that, they have extra worksheets and stuff, but for us, it's, it's optional and how we incorporate it. I'm looking at my notes now. Uh, what's the resource Horizon Math? How we incorporate it. So again, it's our spine. My boys will do it five or six days a week. My girls used to do it five or six days a week, um, but now they are doing a Zoom, virtual Zoom class with an awesome homeschool mom slash math teacher extraordinaire. And that's a, an algebra class. They do that two times a week and they have homework for that. So I've scaled down they're only required to do it Monday Wednesday and Friday on the days they're not doing algebra and um, I say five or six days a week and that's another thing we do in general when we are otherwise not occupied we will plug in a Saturday we'll do school on Saturdays why because school for us only takes two or three hours at the most sometimes a lot less than that so imagine if you had 52 more days to do that 20 30 40 minutes of math, how much that adds up over a year. So we've always done school uh, year round and um, 
done at school on Saturdays as well, unless we take a break. We take breaks when we want to. A couple weeks ago, we went to Lake Livingston from Tuesday to Friday. I packed the school stuff. School did not happen other than reading. So, but that said, we don't just take obligatory breaks. We don't take the whole summer off and, and things as well. Um, let me flip my notes over here. So what's the objective of the goal or the goal? So one of my big things about math is there's such a a cloud looming of, of fear of math and culturally, um, I guess, think as Americans, we have a stigma around uh, math. And I always wanted my kids to not feel as though it was too much of a challenge for them that they were just naturally bad at math. Um, so uh, in a broader sense, pursuing uh, math has provided an opportunity to uh, do hard things well and notice that hard things is not just that they're innately hard, but there's we have to find uh, ways to overcome that and persist and figure out how we learn instead of just throwing our hands up and saying it, it, it can't happen. Um, that nowadays they may not need to think, uh, just count change as much, even though I've insisted that they learn to count change. Uh, understanding math concepts and being able to solve those problems help you to better analyze and um, understand the world around you and think critically. Uh, one thing I notice a lot of people don't understand statistics and probability. That's a big thing. I want my kids to have a good grasp of math concepts so that they can hear information and um, consider it in light of the probability and and things that um, and how it would actually uh, be feasible in real life um, so oh this is my last thing I wanted to mention um, oh yeah and of course I don't want their career prospects limited by uh, not having or understanding math so I want to make sure that they have a good math foundation uh, one thing that helped frame my uh, concept of math and frame how I approach it as an educator is, uh, you see this book here's an audio book, How to Bake Pie by Eugenia Ching. I read it or listened to it rather a few years back and it really enlightened me and opened my eyes to a way of just viewing math so that it's not a handicap, so that it is seen as useful and not just um, pointless you know, why would I ever need this? Um, so she does a really good job of explaining um, her experience with having dismissed the importance of math and then learning uh, that it is a life skill. It is something that can be valuable in uh, broader applications in life. Again, that's uh, how to bake pie as in 3.14. See the little pie symbol? And I love a good wordplay joke. So I couldn't get over that. Anywho, um, I hope this is helpful. Over the next few days, I'm probably gonna go through some of the math supplements that we use and talk about our other math resources. But until then, if you have any uh, questions or comments, uh, let me know. I want feedback as I'm doing these. I'm taping these daily or uh, bi-daily and I, I wanna um, you know, be able to incorporate your feedback as I go. So thanks, I hope this was helpful and talk to you tomorrow.